What's going on, guys? Raw eating is a concern for a lot of people in regards to bacteria, and there is a lot of, you know, misinformation around, you know, bacteria in food, and especially meat, and why we get sick from it. So, I mean, if you look on my screen here, dozens sick and salmonella outbreak traced to pre-cut melons from India. You know, there was an E. coli outbreak in romaine lettuce the other day. Uh, well, not the other day, but like three or four weeks ago, or maybe even two months ago. But what all, you know, E. coli is found in the digestive tract of cattle, and salmonella is found in the digestive tract of chicken. I'm not sure if E. coli is also in chicken, but it might be. But this is, this is in the fecal matter, the digestive tract of these animals, and we use that for fertilizing soil. That's how it gets in fruits and vegetables. Or it's cross-contamination from these foods that, you know, maybe the facility used both, is processing both. But one important thing to note is that these strains of salmonella and E. coli are not what they were in the past. They are much more antibiotic resistant. They are much more dangerous to humans. You know, you could eat, if you shot a, a wild elk, you could eat its intestinal tract because the strain of E. coli in its digestive tract is not harmful. It's, it's a natural strain. It's not, you know, doesn't have years of being pumped full of antibiotics and evolving against, you know, uh, our modern medicine. So, modern strains, uh, this is why it's harmful. Like, why does it make, how does it make sense that something harmful is in an animal that we eat? That's why. Uh, so, we have to, that's how we have to avoid it. And this is so, that's why egg shells and eggs can have salmonella. It's the fecal matter when the chicken excretes the egg gets on the shell and it stays on it. In order to avoid salmonella or E. coli, you have to either buy pastured animals that have not harmful strains. Or you have to, you know, sear the outside of the meat, eliminate cross-contamination, or hope that it wasn't cross-contaminated when you eat it. So in the case of chicken, very, very risky. Most chicken is cross-contaminated because of the butchering process, how easy it is to cross-contaminate chicken. Beef is a little safer, but regardless, ground meat from either is generally not safe from the supermarket. Very high risk of contamination. Definitely want to cook it through or even grind your own meat if you enjoy it a lot. So yeah, I guess ways to avoid E. coli and salmonella are to either just buy high quality animals that don't have the, the bad harmful strains, or you can sear the outside or cook your meat through. In the case of beef from the supermarket, you know, you buy a steak, sear the outside, kill the bacteria on the outside, you know, remove the risk of cross-contamination. Uh, you know, in the case of someone like me who eats raw organ meats, raw marrow, things like that, there's always a risk of cross-contamination, but, you know, I've been on this diet for five and a half years and I've never been sick. So... Hey, you know, I went to, um, I'm sure you can go to a doctor and if they tested my stomach, you know, maybe I'd have higher than normal levels of certain bacteria or different bacteria than other people, but I've never been sick from eating uh, raw beef for five and a half years and I've eaten, I've eaten raw chicken on occasion and I've also eaten plenty of raw pork. Uh, I eat ground raw pork from a farmer. I Listen guys, I, I, got, I can't do that. Like pork is the one thing I will not eat raw. It's just, we'll talk about trichinosis next. So... Uh, you know, salmonella and E. coli are, you know, it's pretty simple to explain that they occur in the digestive tract of the animal, and you can imagine, you know, how it can go on other things, you know, whether it's during the slaughtering process or in fertilizer or fecal matter, or, hey, maybe even these animals shit on each other, and they didn't clean them off too well in the butchering process. So I think that, that kind of sums up the two most, uh, the largest concerns, and something that, you know, we don't really hear a lot about anymore is trichinosis, and Trichinosis is a worm in pork, and it, it occurs in scavenging animals, animals that eat fecal matter and garbage, bears, wild boars, pigs. And since we don't feed our pigs garbage anymore and shit, uh, trichinosis isn't nearly as common, although it's still, you know, I heard about someone the other week that got trichinosis from eating raw bacon. So it can still definitely still happen. And th again, this occurs, um, it's very visible. You know, the, these worms... They burrow through your intestinal tract. They lay eggs and cysts in your body. You know the, the eggs calcify into cysts. Uh, there's a woman. You know her brain with calcified cysts. This is a Chinese girl who ate pork since she was 10 to age 23, and she's permeated by worms and cysts. It's insane. Uh, so you know trichinosis can easily be seen in the meat. Uh, you know you bite into a cyst. It's very obvious. You know Steve Rinella on Meat Eater got trichinosis from eating bear meat. And, guys, if the meat has trichinosis in it, it has to be cooked to 165. 
No one cooks their meat to 165. Like, if your meat has trichinosis, you're probably going to get it. You know, and in the case of freezing, I, I think it has to be negative 30 for like seven days or something. They don't do that to bacon and pork. So, you know, the rate of trichinosis is fairly low in the United States. And I remember there's a trichinosis outbreak from wild boar. So there's like 20 cases per year, 10 to 20 cases per year in, uh, in these in the United States and it was mostly from wild boar and unspecified pork pork from foreign travel oh then there's bear so yeah so bear bear accounts for 25 out of 80 cases wild boar is 13 out of 80 cases unknown is 23 out of 80 cases so it, it's safe to say that you know if you're not eating wild boar or bear meat you're pretty much safe from trichinosis. And as I said, the thing about trichinosis and a lot of these worms is even if you cook the meat really well, they still survive. So although mollusks aren't really, you know, too popular to be concerned about, uh, you know, they can, they are filtering animals, so they can have, you know, I think they can have listeria too. Flesh-eating bacteria after eating raw oysters? What? 80,000 illnesses and 100 deaths. Diarrhea, vomiting. I've actually never heard of that. I don't really want to talk about it because it's probably not too popular. So it's uh, so it's safe to say a lot of these, uh, a lot of these bacteria, they didn't exist, you know, hundreds to thousands of years ago. And the reason they are causing problems now is mainly because of sewage and pollution. And you know we're polluting a lot of our food sources, and this is why, especially mollusks and clams and mussels, I don't eat them because they taste terrible, and I'm sure it's because of the water they're in. So these filtering animals, although I wouldn't say they're a high risk for contamination of disease, you've got to imagine, filtering animal, polluted ocean, doesn't taste good, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, but now we'll move on to worms in fish. And first we'll talk about the non-harmful roundworms. And these are known as nematodes, I believe. You guys saw, I had, listen, I have a video I titled Tapeworm in Salmon. They're not, they weren't technically tapeworms, they're segmented, uh, tapeworms are segmented. These worms I'm going to talk about now are not segmented. These are not harmful to the human digestive system. Um, those are some roundworms there. This is a roundworm and fish. They're very tiny. They're translucent. This is a larger one. You know, this is a larger one in fish. This is exactly what they look like very close up. But these are these are very, very small. Oh, that's not one. These are very small. Very, very hard to see. Uh, very tiny. They so uh, you guys can see, it's, it's very hard to see the tapeworm. They're like literally translucent in the meat. Like, you could see one here. But as you can imagine, very, very, very hard to see. Very, almost impossible to see. Here's one that, uh, this one was actually moving. Um, definitely alive. So... These worms are not harmful to humans, thankfully. They, they can cause digestive stress. You know, they try to burrow through the intestine, but they can't. Uh, in humans, they can't do that. Uh, in fish, they do. That's why they're in the muscle meat. They burrow through the intestines of the fish. They lay eggs in the muscle meat. That's where they live. They're usually in the belly and the tail. Apparently, I don't think they affect the life of the fish that much, but uh, these are not harmful to humans. So... You know, they can be killed by freezing in negative 30 for a period of days, and they can also be killed by cooking. But as with other worms and parasites, people generally don't cook to a high enough temperature to kill them. So if you guys want to watch this video with the tapeworms in it, I actually have a whole video on tapeworms. Uh, and it's these technically round worms. They're not actually tapeworms. Like, I don't know why I keep saying tapeworm. But uh, it's actually on my channel. It's titled Tapeworm and Alaskan Salmon. This was... Uh, towards the end, uh, middle of last year, August of last year, um, I just I just thought it was interesting, and I should mention it because it is my video, and I did I do have firsthand experience with these worms. Uh, onto the harmful worms in fish that you hear people talk about, you know these tapeworms in fish that are harmful are segmented worms. They're much much larger. You could see the eggs very very visibly. They're so much larger in 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 large, uh, and it's only usually in fish higher up in the food chain because of how large these worms are and these are the ones that can you know cause they can grow in the human digestive system I don't I don't believe they can dig through the intestine like trichinosis can but 
um, you know, the, these large tapeworms are what, what humans can contract. And generally speaking, you will never really be served a fish that has these large tapeworms that are dangerous because they're so obvious to see, and any professional is going to remove them. Uh, just like the roundworms, they can be killed by freezing at very low temperatures or cooking at 165. Again, most people don't cook their meat that much. But, uh, and it, the only real concern most people would have is if you're buying your own larger ocean fish and, you know, you, you come across it when you're butchering it. But most of the time, you buy a larger fish, it's gutted already. So, uh, you know, these aren't really too much of a concern for most people. Uh, I think that you shouldn't really worry about these. You know, the other worms will be much more common. Even in larger fish, it will be roundworms and nematodes, not really these tapeworms. I've never seen tapeworms in fish, and you know, like I've I've watched so much fish in my life, and I've never seen any. And uh, I guess the last thing to note on in regards to worms and fish is that smaller the fish, lower chance. I've eaten hundreds of Norwegian mackerel, and I've never seen any type of worm in the fish, or the belly, or the digestive tract. So. Uh, you know, definitely go for those smaller fish if this really skeeves you out or creeps you out. You know, I've I have salmon roe right now in my freezer that I, I eat it every day. I know there's worms in it. I see the worms in it. You know, I, I just pick them out. So uh, it's one thing if it's infested with worms, like like bundles of worms, but that's usually not the case. On to, uh, so I think to sum up tapeworms and fish, there's two different types. There's nematodes, round worms, which are not harmful. There's the larger tapeworms and azotrichinosis. It's very obvious to see they are dangerous, can be killed by freezing, but you know the main way to avoid it, as with trichinosis, is to avoid eating that food source. You know, if you're going to buy larger ocean fish, be really sure that you, you butcher it properly and that you know um, you can either you either deep freeze it ahead of time or things like that. But again, not really something I'd be worried about. Same thing with trichinosis, unless you're eating bear meat or wild boar. Uh, I guess the last thing to talk about is mad cow disease, uh, Creutzfeldt variant. Creutzfeldt Jacob disease and so the thing I made a video on this mad cow disease Creutzfeldt Jacob disease and th first of all there's never been a, it's never been contracted in the United States um, here it says uh, four cases of this have been reported from the United States um, there's strong evidence that suggests two of the four cases were exposed to it in the United Kingdom and the third was exposed while living in Saudi Arabia so there have never been any cases of mad cow disease in the United States from meat eaten here. So what this actually is, is they fed the cows cow meal, which gave them this weird variation of this disease, and it made it transmittable to humans. The only way to get this disease before this happened was to eat human brain tissue, or like brain surgeons would contract this, and whether, I don't know, some sort of brain surgery, or if you're in a car accident, where human brain tissue is involved. That's how you would have gotten this disease. Now, the, this mutant version in cows is transmittable to humans, and it's only really been seen in countries outside of the United States. Now, uh, you cannot transmit this disease from other animals. You know, the version in lamb, in pork, in other animals is not transmittable to humans. It's called, I think it's called scabby or something, in goats or sheep or something, but you can't catch it thing is, if you did eat a cow that had mad cow disease, you're going to get it. It's, it's in every tissue in the animal. It's not just in the brain. It's not just in the spinal cord. Although it has higher concentrations in those parts of the animal, you know, the nervous tissue. It's in the muscle. It's in the, it's everywhere in the animal. If it has mad cow disease, you're, you're going to get it, you know. So it's not a concern in the United States. I wouldn't worry about it. I just wanted to clear those things up for people. So I think I've summarized all the the bacterial and parasite and you know anything negative you could get from eating raw meat or even cooked meat for the most because guys if your food is heavily infected to sum this up if your food is heavily infected with bacteria or parasites you're likely not going to cook it to a high enough temperature to kill them so you know be be mindful of where you buy your food be observant when you're eating your food and you know, don't go to China and start eating large ocean fish or like raw pork, you know? Have some common sense. So, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this cleared up things. Uh, and in regards to my raw diet, that's why I've never really been sick. I've only eaten grass-fed beef bought firsthand from purveyors, and I've only really eaten 
And when you eat raw fish, keep in mind, you know, you fillet the fish open and you scoop the meat out. It's never been touched. Unless you're getting the fish fillet in the supermarket, but that's that's a different story. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I don't wear makeup, guys. Please, like, I'm rubbing my face. I do not wear makeup. Someone's going to ask it in this video.